Okay, so we're now recording and Audrey from UNCG ITS is going to talk about sharing or sorry, using Panopto to share Zoom recordings in Canvas. So Audrey, you can um, take it away. And Deb, I just mentioned uh, if you want to stay muted and maybe turn your camera on throughout the uh, presentation part of the webinar so that uh, you're not um, in the recording that will end up on YouTube. And I just, so anyone else who came in, that is the deal. So you're welcome to leave your camera on, but you will be on YouTube in that way. So um, Audrey, take it over. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, and before I dig too deep into details, um, I, I just wanna take a quick minute to talk about kind of um, Zoom and Panopto because I know it can be confusing and overwhelming. Um, Uh-oh. Are you guys seeing my slide? I'll just leave it like that, is that better? Yeah, uh, we weren't seeing okay. how we are. Okay, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so it's easy for us in ITS to just say, you know, um, are you seeing it? Okay, okay, sorry. It just looks weird on my end for some reason. Um, yeah, it's easy for us to say, you know, just use Panopto now since Zoom recordings are limited. <laughs> but um, I like to start at the beginning and, and the, the, the differences between those platforms might not be clear to everyone who's new to them. So if you're here, you probably know that Zoom is for web conferencing. And um, you probably use it to hold real time virtual class sessions with your students. And I think that's really the key term um, we want to think of when we think of Zoom, real time web conferencing. And Panopto on the other hand is a lecture capture application. When we think of lecture capture, um, that's more about recording and preserving what happens in our class sessions. And that's the key difference here and how we really need to be thinking about these two tools. And Zoom is great for live stuff, Panopto not so much. It's lacking the features that make Zoom great um, for those real-time interactions with our students. It's a one-way medium, it's not interactive at all. But Zoom on the other hand is lacking the features that make Panopto great for our recordings. So I know it feels like an extra thing you guys need to do right now, but I think by the time um, we wrap up today, you'll feel like I do, like we're really lucky at UNCG to have both. And um, also, it's super easy to use Panopto to share your Zoom recordings. <laughs> it's really effortless. So all you really have to do to make this work is just to add Panopto to your course navigation and, um, and, and click that link to activate it in your course. And once you set that up, any of the sessions you've scheduled in your, in your Canvas course will automatically appear in Panopto. And um, you don't really have to do anything else. I'm gonna go into some features later in the session, um, but to get it set up, that's it. That's like all you really have to do. But because we're in Zoom and um, let me just share my YouTube. Um, because we're in Zoom and I can't really show you um, what happens in Zoom when we're in Zoom. Zoom doesn't let you do that. I did create a video to show you guys um, what this all looks like start to finish. And I will share the link, or maybe um, Sam can share the link to this in the chat so you can hold on to this and watch it later when you're, when you're setting this up in your course. Recordings in the Zoom cloud will only be available for 30 days but adding Panopto will make the Zoom recording scheduled in your Canvas course available to students for the duration of the semester. Let's look at the Zoom Panopto integration in action. So the first thing I need to do is add both Zoom and Panopto to my course navigation. And I'm going to click the Panopto video link to activate it in my course. Where is then that? I'm going to schedule yes. my Zoom session. I'm sorry, was there a question? Questions for the semester. Making sure to record the sessions to the cloud. 
So let's go ahead and run my first Zoom session. And end it. I don't know if Bobby lost me. And watch what happens in Panopto. I don't have to do anything. Simply by adding Panopto to my course, the recordings for any Zoom sessions I schedule here are automatically added to Panopto. Students will be able to access the recordings as soon as the uploading and publishing process is complete, and they will remain available for the duration of the semester. Of course, I can remove them or restrict access at any point if needed. But using Panopto to share my recordings adds a variety of helpful features for myself and my students. You can learn more on our YouTube channel. Okay, did you guys catch all that? I did a link to the video in the chat uh, if anyone wants to save it to watch it again later too as well. Okay, great. So you guys were able to see it and hear it and it made sense? I actually don't know where to find the, the apps that you're talking about. So I think sure, I'm yeah. like really behind the time. Okay, no worries. So I can go ahead and run through that real quick for you right now. So um, can you see my Canvas course? Yes. Okay. Um, so um, if you go to settings in your course, and then you look at the navigation tab. This is where you can find those. So I've already added them to my course. So you can see they're up at the top here. And this navigation here reflects what I've put here. So if I change the order here and then I click save, you'll see it changes the order here. So this is a, a direct reflection. This navigation is what is, is controlled by what I put here. So when you first start this, um, when you first start this in your course, you'll see Zoom and Panopto down here. And you'll just want to, let's say this is Zoom, you'll just want to drag it up, put it wherever you want it in your navigation, and then click Save. And then you'll have Zoom and Panopto in your course. And this is where you can come to schedule your meetings. So you can see I've scheduled all my meetings for the semester here. And when I look at my settings, I've scheduled them to record automatically to the cloud. And when you record your Zoom sessions to the cloud via Canvas, and you have Panopto enabled in this same course, automatically my Zoom sessions are gonna appear here after that recording is complete and Panopto has um, like processed and published it. So Panopto usually says it takes about maybe um, half the time of your session for it to become available. So let's say you have a class session with your students that's two hours, you'll probably see your Zoom session here in Panopto within one hour, if that makes sense. Um, and, and so really that's how it works. Once you set this up, your, um, your Zoom sessions will start appearing here as you record them. And you can also add additional videos. So I added a couple of videos here so I could show you guys the, um, the, the features of Panopto. But before I move on to those features, do you guys have any other questions about setting that up? I did I'm just wanna- I'm really sorry, but I can't actually find Panopto or Zoom in the settings. I'm not sure where they are. Okay, well, we can take that after the session, maybe after we wrap up, we can actually maybe have you screen share and I can walk you through it. Does that sound okay? Yeah, uh, Abby, uh, Audrey, um, yeah. uh, my question was, um, how do you, I missed the part where you actually enable the Panopto, how do you enable the Panopto to this specific class? Is it just when you move it in Navigator up into that, into the visible heading, is, yep. is that what's making it enabled or is there some other? The only other step is just clicking it. So if you never click Panopto video, if you add Panopto video here and never click it, it's not gonna work. Once you click this, you guys will see a little screen here, probably if you've never used Panopto before, asking you to authorize the use of Panopto and you wanna accept that. Um, after that, that's it. If you don't click in here, in every one of your courses where you wanna do it, you just need to remember to click because that's when this course folder gets created. If you just add Panopto video here, the course folder won't be created and that connection won't be set. 
You just have to click, that's it. Add it, click, and all of it will automatically happen on the back end. Um, okay, yeah. well, do you need to add Zoom somehow into Panopto? Nope, all you have to do, it's all through Canvas. So Canvas establishes this connection for us. So when you, if you just go to zoom.uncg.edu and schedule a meeting for you know your department, that's not going to automatically happen in Panopto. Got it's it. anything that you schedule via Canvas. Does that make okay. sense? Okay, yes, yes. Yep. So, so I can see all my sessions here. They're all set to record automatically to the cloud and they will all start appearing here once, once they're, they've been completed. Any other questions about setting it up before I move on to the features? So does this process add the, um, the uh, transcript to it? No, in fact, that's one of the very first features I wanted to show you. So um, I added a couple example ones here so I could just show this to you. What you wanna do to add the transcript is click edit and then the editor is gonna open up. And I've never added captions to this video before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click captions and then import captions and then import automatic captions. And so during that processing um, that happens before your video becomes available, it does create this. It's just, you have to come in here and click this to add it because especially for accessibility, we need our, our transcripts to be very accurate. So Zoom automatically adds that transcript um, to your recordings as soon as you make them available. In Panopto, you're given a chance to come in here and, and edit them before they're available to students because this could be riddled with errors. As you know, automatic captioning is not perfect. So you can see right here, it spelled my name wrong. So I can come in here and change that. Sometimes it names me Audrey, uh, Rachel Ray, for some reason, this has happened like three times. I don't know why, but when I come in here and change it, all I have to do is add those captions, make my corrections and then click apply. And that's going to add the captions and the transcript to my video for students to view. Now, what happens um, when you do that, usually when you start making changes, oops, sorry, is, where did my, there it is. Um, it starts kind of processing again. So your video might become unavailable again for a little bit um, when you start making changes because it has to kind of redo everything and re-upload it. Now I wanna show you another quick feature um, before I close out of this editing window, which is the trimming feature. So I know sometimes we start our Zoom sessions 15 minutes early or whatever, students are filtering in, we're chit-chatting. What you can actually do is come in here and very easily trim that out. So let's say, you know, I started my class 10 minutes after, um, after I started my session. I can just easily trim that out. And sometimes students say things that maybe we don't want captured in our recordings during those, those little bits. So all I have to do is come in here. I can trim out any pieces of the video I don't want in here by, by just simply dragging across the timeline here. It's very simple and straightforward. And then you can just um, click apply again, and that will take place. Then when students go to watch the video, all of those bits will be removed. So, so Audrey, where, where do, you, where is that icon, and then where is the apply button? The icon for trimming. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. You don't actually. This, this is the little, this is the little icon right here. But you don't even have to click it. This is just what this section of the of the editing screen is for. So just by clicking and dragging, I'm removing parts of. Um, of my but, video and I just clicked revert so I could start over again. But you'll notice now fresh, I don't actually have to do anything. I just have to click and drag. I don't have to, I don't have to turn on the, the trimmer or anything like that. Right, but how, how do you get it to this point? Don't you have to click on that trimmer at some point in order to activate it? Nope. How did you get into this screen like this? Sure, so from Canvas, when I go into Panopto, all I'm gonna do is click the edit button. Oh, okay. That, okay. That's where you can add the captions, you can trim your video, and you can also add quick, 
quiz questions to your video if you're interested. So let's say, you know, um, you want to create a quiz about a video for students and that can help keep them engaged and make sure they're watching the whole thing. It kind of shows them what's important um, in your lecture and you can set this up as a completely separate activity um, if you wanted to do that, but you don't have to, but you can just click anywhere in the timeline and add a quiz question to that point in the timeline. So those are a few of the, the kind of editing features that you can do when, uh, yep. Oh, oh, okay, so sorry to be so slow, but uh, but no. it, you said something about click the apply button or, or yep. how, how do you make sure that, how, how do you, how, how does, how do you save this? Yep, every time, anytime you wanna save your changes, whether it's a quiz question or um, an edit to your timeline or adding captions, you click this apply button up here. Ah, okay. And there's you a can question click in the chat, Audrey, along a similar um, you know, uh, topic of, can you also edit out the after class uh, discussions? So, okay, so I think what you're asking, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, let's take a look at this one. So now restaurant review. I'm in the view screen. So this is as if I'm a student, there is a discussion feature here. Um, and a student can, let's say, ask a question. Um, and then you, you can delete or edit any of those things that happen here. Is that, does that answer your question? Oh, or are you asking, um, yeah, you can edit out any part of your video. Is that what you're? I think that answers both. Okay. Scenarios. Either way. Yeah, okay, both scenarios. Yes. <laughs> you can, you have complete control over your videos, if that makes sense. So any anything that's in your videos, you can remove them, front, middle, back, wherever. Um, anything that's added to your video, questions, anything, you have complete control. Um, and, and again, this is what makes Panopto great for students. So um, it's not just, you know, it, it does, it has so many of these little features and let's go back to that view. Um, I can look at the captions and this is what's great also from the, from the, the caption standpoint, I can look at the transcript here as a student or I can turn on captions here whichever works best for me. Um, that's a great accessibility feature. Another great accessibility feature is the speed of the playback. So as a student, um, I can watch this more slowly, um, if that helps me. Use and lots of recipes. I sound <laughs> Gail calling it. Or I, if I'm someone who digests verbal, um, you know, audi aud auditory information very quickly, I can watch it very fast. Saying arts database includes access to over 250 relevant magazines and journals, plus content. From so that's kind of like a next level accessibility feature, um, which is awesome for students. The other thing, like I mentioned, they can um, they can add discussion notes, so they can kind of discuss things about the video between between themselves or just to themselves so they can keep notes within your video or add bookmarks, which is amazing. So let's say, you know, on your January 20th session, you go over a major assignment in the course, the student can come in and bookmark um, that part in the video. So as they're working on that assignment throughout the semester, they can easily find that, that information. And it also has this wonderful search feature. And this is really my favorite feature in Panopto, which is that students can come in here and search throughout all of your videos. So again, let's say you talked about something at some point in the semester. Um, I used to kind of warn faculty when I was an instructional designer for online classes, I used to kind of warn them about burying information in videos because it can be very difficult for students to find. But Panopto solves that problem by um, kind of adding this search feature. And so they, create that transcript of every video that you upload and then students can then search it. So let's say I wanna find everything that my teacher said about a database. Um, it'll come up and it'll point me to every mention in every video across your course. And then like, oh, this is what I needed to know. I can come in here. It'll bring me right to that point in the video, which is beautiful. So again, Zoom has those great options for those live real-time interactions. Um, Panopto has those great features 
for um, our videos and our recordings for afterwards. And then real quick, before I wrap it up for um, questions, my cat is here. <laughs> if I look distracted, <laughs> she's here to distract me. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about analytics and statistics. So this is something that's also missing from, <laughs> from Zoom. Um, we can see who came to our session with our Zoom reports, but Panopto lets us know what's happening with our recordings. So um, we have all of these great statistics for our videos. We can see as a whole, um, you know, who's watching, if the class is, you know, using my videos throughout the semester. And I can see down to an individual student, what are they doing with my videos? Are they watching them? And, you know, let's say your student um, missed a class and you tell them you want them to watch a recording, you can actually poke in here and see if they have by the minute, which minutes of the video that the student actually watched. So really that's the main things that I wanted to, to cover. And um, I'm gonna open it up to questions questions. Oh, and I did want to show you that we do have um, a Panopto playlist on our YouTube channel. So I can drop that in the, in the chat. Um, but if you're curious about doing more with Panopto, you can learn all about it right here on our YouTube channel. And we're also here for you, your school ITCs, um, ITS Learning Technology, the library, we're all here to help you with whatever you need. So if you feel a little overwhelmed by what I've shown you right now, don't worry, there's um, lots more information and we're all here just like an email or a help ticket away. So with that, um, go ahead and just any more questions that you guys have. I have a question, this is Sunny. Uh, so, and I think I know, but I just want to double check with you. <laughs> so if I wanted to do a screencast of one of my online courses that is an asynchronous course, and I just used Zoom by myself to do a video where I was maybe orienting students to how, my, how our online course is laid out, could I then use with Panopto enabled on my course you know, pull that video in and then have all those features with the transcript and all of the things you just went through? Yep, you absolutely can do that. That would work just fine. With Zoom, Zoom can be a meeting of one. <laughs> We're just using it that way. And, you know, just by setting that, if you start it in your course, it'll automatically be added to Panopto in your course. But if you use another tool to record it, um, or if, you know, if you don't want to schedule it in your, in your class, you can simply upload videos to Panopto as well. And let me just, I'm gonna share again, just to show you what I mean real quick. So within Panopto, there's this create button and we can use, we can upload videos here as well. So if let's say you don't schedule something in Zoom in, you know, in your course, you can still go to Zoom, download a video and upload it here. And that also applies like if you forgot to, um, to set this up in your course. Let's say, you know, in 30 days you find out, no, no, my Zoom recordings are gonna be deleted. You can simply go into Zoom, download them and upload them to Panopto. It's, it's, not, it's not too late <laughs> if you don't get this set up right away. Oh, cool. Yeah. So a follow-up question. Uh, so this semester I'm teaching my first online class with synchronous class meetings. And I had never enabled Zoom in my previous courses before. So mm -hmm. now um, when I set up my course, I just created a Zoom meeting, just going to uncg.zoom.whatever, and then copied the link to our course homepage and in announcements and you know many different ways to get it to students so they know class is happening at this time and here's the link to get here. So if I already have that meeting set up in Zoom, not through my course, is there a way to get that meeting into my course or do I just need to create a new link? Yeah, I would come add Zoom to your course and set up your sessions here. Um, okay. And that was kind of the way we did it before we had the Zoom integration. But I think that doing it this way um, is kind of like the, the typical experience for students. So students, our students are getting used to coming to Zoom in the course and coming here and they're able to see all the upcoming sessions and they can join from this page. So I think it's a okay. great idea to just try to get it set up 
with the integration in your course. And then you don't have to worry about um, downloading the recordings and then uploading them and all of that. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, I have a question. Um, okay. I didn't, up, I, I uploaded Panopto to one of my courses with, and I already had Zoom in, but the other course I did not, and I've already started that class. Can I still upload Panopto and make this, you know, put, put it, go from navigation to put it up into the visible part of the course? You sure can, and, yes. And then yeah, I, can, I, I can uh, record it like, I could I could do a re, a Zoom recording with just me, uh, showing something or lecturing, and and then I up I upload that somehow into Panopto. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah. If you have something else you want to record that's not a class session, you can absolutely do that with Zoom, or you can do it directly with Panopto whatever you're most comfortable with. Either way will work fine. So Panopto does have a recorder that you can use, but you can certainly just, you know, create it um, in Zoom and 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 it'll add to your Panopto. Okay, and so you're saying that it's it's actually, that the students are more familiar with Zoom and it's, it's better probably to keep those, but they will only, they will only stay recorded for 30 days, right, in Zoom? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I just said that students were more familiar with the Zoom integration in Canvas rather than the way she mentioned that she did it, where she created her Zoom sessions elsewhere and then shared the link a bunch of places with students. But they this is the way that the vast majority of our faculty will be sharing their recordings with students going forward because of the 30 day limit with Zoom recordings. So Zoom recordings are going to go away after 30 days. There's no way that, that we can extend that um, to be available for the entirety of the semester. So if you want to make your Zoom recordings available, this is the way that, that you'll do it. And this is the way that our students will learn to, to access them. So not many people did it this way last semester, but going forward, pretty much everybody will be doing it this way. Okay, so they, they are able to access it once you upload it into Panopto, they go to the Panopto button. That's right. right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you can tell students during your first class session or an announcement, however you want to communicate it, that they can go to Panopto video to watch the class re session recordings. Great. Great. You can add it to your module. I teach it my course in module by using the modules. You can just add the video in the appropriate module, right? And put off you there. sure can. Yeah, I can show you, you that if you, you want to. You, you can add a, a, a Zoom link. How do you get a Zoom link for a module? Um, I Are you talking about the recording? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me go ahead and share. I have a quick question while you're doing that. Okay. Um, so I've been, because of this 30 day limit, I've just been recording my Zooms to my computer and saving them in box. I can still save them in box beyond 30 days, right? You can, yep. Okay. You absolutely right. can. Okay. So you can see here, I can um, simply add like a page. And let's say I wanna call this um, week one class session. And then on this page, I can go ahead and embed anything from Panopto. So you guys, if you don't use Panopto a lot, you might find Panopto under your apps button. I use it all the time, so it appears here for me. But I can come in here and you can see here's my Zoom videos. In, I mean, my uh, anything in my Panopto is available here. And I can even grab um, videos from other course folders if I wanna share them with my students. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's say, you know, this is my class session from week one. I'll click insert. And now this video will appear on this page for my students to watch. And they can still access a lot of those same features, um, the discussion, the notes, the bookmarks, and they can even search within this video if I do it this way. And then um, this would appear like she said 
within my module for students to watch. And I love that. I love that you do that. Um, organizing everything very intuitively into modules for your students. Yeah, I couldn't do it any other way. <laughs> um, so uh, this is Sam. I, I know that we're past 1230. So if you have to go, remember that I did put an assessment link in the chat um, and um, we can stay. I was telling you, like, I'm free if we want to stay and keep showing stuff and talking. Um, I can even turn the recording off if we need to um, at a certain point. Um, so keep that in mind if you have to go. Um, I have a question. Um, okay. It's that for the different roles within Canvas, like say you enroll a TA or a course designer, um, does that influence uh, how the recordings connect to uh, Panopto at all? Or whether you could do like a guest lecture, for example, like I'm thinking about that we as librarians are added in, in a librarian role in Canvas and we do do like Zoom sessions for information literacy stuff. So could we still use the like, um, turn on the recording and um, add it to Panopto as a, like, I think the librarian role is really the same thing as a course designer. Yes, that should be available to you. Um, I did go and try that last week because I was curious and it worked just fine. But I know sometimes because I'm an admin in Canvas, things work a little bit differently for me. So if you ever run into any trouble, you just let me know. But um, as I would recommend in that situation to still just schedule it through, Zoom. if it's scheduled in Zoom in the course, <laughs> then that will still just be automatic. But you still will be able to, I just actually worked with a librarian the other day um, and he was saying that he is one of the faculty he's working with wants him to add his videos to the Panopto stream <laughs> in that course. And when we logged into Panopto, he did have access to that course folder to do so. Anything else? All right. Um, uh Audrey, is there a chance that I could connect with you later on this afternoon? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And uh, if y'all want, I can uh, turn, I'll turn the recording off. So thank you all for coming. Um, remember that we will be sending out the recording and to fill out the assessment if you have a chance. And um, I'll turn the recording off right now. Okay. Thank you.